<laughs> Yo, because bro was really walking around like. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. We're using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Shin Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today, I wanted to make a small video uh, about the new AMD Ryzen CPUs that are gonna be released and that, uh, and I'm making this mostly because AMD seems to have a problem with naming schemes. For example, if you watch the, um, the previous APUs that they have, for example, the Ryzen 5 2400G, supposedly second generation Ryzen, which should be Zen Plus, but it isn't. It is basically Zen Plus IMC, so Zen Plus memory controller, and Zen 1 cores. So, not Zen Plus cores. And as for, for example, the 3400G, it should be Zen 2 cores because it is the 3400G, 3000 series, and the 3000 series has um, Zen 2 cores. But no, it has Zen Plus cores with the Zen Plus IMC. So let's start with the first CPUs. Okay, we have the, the Ryzen 5 5500, the 5600, and the 5700X. The 5500 at 159, the 5600 at 199, and the, the 5700X at 299. Now, the first, th the first things that you actually need to, to understand are that, for example, both of these CPUs, the 5500 and the 5600 non-X, are both 6 cores 12 threads. And as you see here, you see that um, the boost clocks are a bit lower on the 5500, which is to be expected, but it wouldn't make sense for AMD to make a 5500 just with a 200 MHz boost difference, because that could be easily achievable by overclocking, okay? And with the quality of the dice that we have right now, it wouldn't be... it wouldn't make sense at all. So, the biggest difference is here. 19 megabytes cache versus 35 megabytes cache. And this is a difference happening because the 5500 is not a Vermeer CPU. Basically, inside the Zen 3 architecture, you have Cezanne, which are basically the Zen 3 APUs, and you have Vermeer, which are the Zen 3 CPUs, okay? And I repeat, this 5500 is a 5600G without the APU, okay? And that's why it costs only $159. This is not a 5600X or a 5600 with less boost clocks. No, this is a 5600G with no integrated graphics, okay? This is what it is and that's why it costs less because it, overall it also performs worse due to the different architecture, okay? It has its plus, it has its downsides, but we're, we're gonna talk about it. Okay, now we have, for example, the new CPUs 2, which include the lower-end CPUs. As you see, we have the Ryzen 3 4100, the Ryzen 5 4500, and the Ryzen 5 4600G, okay? Now, these are very interesting because these ones are not even Cezanne. These ones are Zen 2. Yep, they are Zen 2 and they are most likely Renoir, which are the Zen 2 APUs. And you can see automatically due to the cache, okay? Due to the cache. For example, you have 6 cores, 12 threads, and you have only 11 megabytes cache. This means that they are Renoir and not Cezanne. So basically, these ones are Zen 2, which is kind of okay because they are the 4000 series, which is kind of, it's kind of okay. So 4000 series. Zen 2, 5000 series, Zen 3. But the only differences are there, basically, in between the APUs, um, the APUs architecture and the, um, the full CPUs architecture. I can imagine and I can see the, the Ryzen 3 4100 actually performing a bit less, um, being a bit less powerful than the 3100, which in my opinion makes no sense because 6 megabytes of cache for a Zen 2 CPU is nothing, okay? So basically we have now the 4600G, which is 
basically a new price performance APU because the APUs that we had recently were kind of expensive and now we have at 154 the 4600 G APU with six cores of threads 11 megabytes of cache and most likely like a Vega 7 or something like that. So it seems pretty fine to me. Then we have the 40, the 4500, which is basically a 4600G with no integrated graphics. And then we have the 4100, which I see no sense at all in having it because we have the 3100 and like I said, it will most likely perform better than this 4100. I may be, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it will, okay? So, yeah. I told you about the differences in between Cezanne, uh, Vermeer, Renoir, uh, and all that, but, for, but I will show you now. For example, here we have the 5000 series mobile, which are basically the Cezanne topology, okay? As you can see, the, one of the biggest differences, they have, they have lower cache, they have lower PCI connections, they have less because uh, they were made to have the integrated GPU and the integrated GPU takes eight PCI Express lanes, okay? But on the other hand, we actually have two memory controllers. And that's the reason why, for example, the Vermeer CPUs and three CPUs kind of a struggle to get to, um, to 4000 megahertz or a bit more than that on RAM at 1-1 ratio with Infinity Fabric. While, for example, you can see um, 5000 G CPUs getting up to 4400 megahertz on RAM at 1-1 ratio or in some cases even more. And that's because they have two memory controllers. They have two memory controllers instead of one and that's why they can actually uh, stand higher memory frequencies, okay? Instead of, uh, in contrary to the Vermeer CPUs that have only one memory controller. So they have less cache, but they have a better memory controller, okay? For example, as you can see here, they are made with less cache, only 16, gigabyte, uh, 16 megabytes even for the 8 core 16 threads. As you can see, you have the Zen 3 CCD and you have only 16 megabytes of L3 cache because you have the other side, you have on the other side the Vega APU, okay? The Vega integrated graphics. So you have only one CCD and you have only 16 megabytes of cache. So now, so now let's go to the Vermeer. So we are on the Cezanne. Let's go to the Vermeer. Um, CPU, okay? Let me just... I think it's here. So, on the Vermeer CPU, it is quite different. So, you have the Zen 2 and the Zen 3 layout. For example, on the Zen 2 layout, you can see that it seems close to Cezanne. So, you have CPU cores and you have 16 megabytes of cache. But, for example, even the CPUs, the Zen 2 CPUs, with, with 32 megabytes of cache, they are divided. So, they have cores here, and they have cores here. But these cores can only access 16 megabytes of cache, and these other cores can only access 16 megabytes of cache as well. On the Zen 3 layout, it is completely different. The 32 megabytes that we have, it is actually 32 megabytes for each core individually. As you can see, all cores are going into the same 32 megabytes L3 cache instead of having the 32 megabytes of L3 cache divided into 2 of 16. This causes latency and makes uh, it available that, for example, in, the, in this case, even if these 16 megabytes L3 cache aren't being used properly, um, these cores or if this, if this megabyte is used to the max, this core can't actually access the other 16 megabytes. It will just be here waiting for the, the, the cache to be freed because it is already being used. While here, if this core is using 16 megabytes of cache, this one can use the other 16 megabytes or even this one because all cores can access the full 32 megabytes of cache individually. So Cezanne has only 16 megabytes of cache, even with the eight cores, 16 threads, while even the Ryzen 5s here on the Vermeer layout, the Zen 3 CPUs layout, have 32 megabytes of cache, okay? So basically that's it. Um, the 5600X is indeed a 5800X with less clocks, with lower clocks, all that, so full CPU. The 5600 is indeed also a 5600X with lower clocks, so full CPU as well, Vermeer, 
and the 5500 and the 5500 sorry is basically a 5600G okay with no integrated graphics so not a full CPU it's an APU with no integrated graphics Cezanne and not Vermeer okay as for the other 4000 series CPUs basically 4100 is a 3100 with improved clocks and better memory controller but less cache okay so it's basically a 3100 in terms of performance I assume the 4500 is indeed the same or almost the same as the 4650G okay so it's still Zen 2 okay it's basically a 46 a 4650G with no integrated graphics or in this case like that we have now the 4600G which is basically a 40 a 4650G for the consumer market not for OEMs and basically 4600G is Zen 2 is kind of let's say it, it is kind of a 3600 more or less in terms of CPU performance a 3600 with integrated graphics so it will be on par on some and it will be slower than the 3600 in some scenarios due to the cache even if they actually make only one CCX instead of two it will still be slower because the cache makes a lot of difference it's 11 megabytes on the 4500 and 32 megabytes on the 3600 it makes a difference okay so yeah guys basically that's it I just wanted to make this short video for you to know the differences so that you know that the 4000 series CPUs are actually APUs with no integrated graphics in its general okay this may confuse a lot of people but I just want my viewers at least to know the differences um, when they're buying their CPUs because they may think that they are actually buying a downclocked 5600 and that's not the case the performance difference will be quite big in some scenarios due to way less cash and due to you due to the fact that you're actually getting a Cezanne uh, APU with no integrated graphics instead of a full Vermeer CPU so basically that's it guys, sorry for the long ass video and sorry for, for it being boring as usual. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video and see you in the next one. <sighs> My shoulders are hurting, I had a very, a very good, oh sorry, I had a very, very tough and good workout yesterday, so... Pff. Anyway, see you in the next video, guys.